Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Hugo Swart, and I lead Qualcomm's XR business. I'm very happy to be here virtually to talk a little bit about Qualcomm's vision and how we are partnering with the XR ecosystem for an unrestrained future. I've been participating in the Vive Developer Conference for the last three, four years, and going to China every one, two months. Of course, this year, I cannot do that. I cannot go to China. I cannot be present with you all in physically in China. But thanks to virtual reality, we can still continue with our lives. We can still continue being productive, feeling presence now virtually through XR. So this is a proof point that XR is happening. What we were talking about a few years ago about virtual reality changing our lives is changing today in this adverse scenario. A little bit of history, many of you already know, but Qualcomm is a firm believer on XR. We started investing in XR more than a decade ago with algorithms and software for smartphones. Later, we decided to create a business for dedicated VR and AR products. Around five years ago, we launched our first reference design. And from that reference design, with Snapdragon 820, we enabled many different products in the market. Many of them in China, like Pico, HTC Vive, ICE, and others. In fact, today, we already launched more than 30 devices across virtual and augmented reality with Snapdragon. The key XR platforms of the world, like Facebook, Microsoft, Google, and Vive, all are using Snapdragon. Now, let's talk a little bit about form factors. When we say mobile XR, what do we mean? It's not necessarily just smartphone VR, smartphone AR, but what we call standalone virtual reality, standalone, standalone augmented, augmented reality, reality devices. devices. Typically, typically in knowing one form factor, where I have all the processor, connectivity, displays, and batteries, all in one piece of hardware. We prove that this is a great user experience, just to put it on your face and it works, and getting a lot of traction in the market. But it's not only, only one type of devices or you know, standalone products that we see success in the market. We start seeing the idea or the concept of a viewer, right, which could be a very simple AR or VR headset, displays, cameras, limited processing, but that tethered to a more powerful host processing unit like a smartphone or a dedicated compute unit. We see, you know, many products from um, in real to three glasses and, and others coming to the market and also getting a lot of interest from our uh, friends in the mobile smartphone industry by using their newest 5G phones connected to this AR and VR viewers. In order to help foster an increase into um, decrease the time to market for these viewers. We created the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR optimized program, which enables us to verify compatibility and performance between various viewers to various smartphones. Many players in China are adopting this, including smartphone OEMs and viewers, and we expect products based on the XR optimized program to be available later this year in the market. Just last week, China Unicom 
announced that they are embracing this concept between viewers and smartphones through their alliance program. And us, you know, our core a partner from China, uh, Unicom, in this effort, where we use our technology and the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR optimized program to help them a quicker time to market. So we talk about an only one unit, we talked about, you know, the viewers. Now I want to talk about what we call boundless XR. With the introduction of a 5G and the mobile edge compute infrastructure that operators are deploying, we now can rely on unlimited or boundless compute happening in the edge of the cloud, in the Mac. Of course, you need a very low latency, high bandwidth medium for this to happen, and that's when 5G comes in. So now if I have a 5G headset, I can distribute the load processing between the headset where the low latency algorithms and compute workloads happen, send that quickly, low latency, to the edge of the cloud over 5G, mobile edge compute does the heavy workload, the rendering, encodes, send it back to the device, device does some final uh, display processing and provide an amazingly photorealistic image to consumers. Here's a diagram that explains how this happens. You see, you know, on the right side, a 5G headset performing that low latency compute on device, sending it over 5G to the edge of the cloud, edge of the cloud encoding, and doing the heavy processing, sending back to the device for a great user experience. Okay, so we talked about, you know, our, a little bit about our history, about how the different mobile XR form factors and product categories are coming to market. Now let's address more specifics on the Qualcomm offering to our partners and our customers. Last December, we announced our newest premium platform for XR, the XR2. XR2 has many new features for the never before experiences we all want in XR. So XR2 is our premium tier solution. XR1, still relevant. XR1 is our high quality tier for mainstream users. So now you will see Qualcomm with the two tiers of, uh, of products, XR2 on the premium tier, XR1 still a great experience, but um, at a high quality tier. This slide summarizes many of the benefits that XR2 brings to the table. First and foremost, it supports 5G. So you're gonna see XR2-based devices with embedded 5G. But beyond 5G, we have many different features to take immersion to the next level. In terms of visuals, we support 3K by 3K displays at 90 frames a second. We support AK60 decode and encode. We support through mixed reality. We double the CPU and GPU compared to its predecessor in the premium tier. And also enhance many of the, the audio and intuitive interaction features necessary for a great next level immersive experience. We have a dedicated computer vision processor that can handle together with our AI and DSP engine, any high concurrency perception algorithms like hand tracking, eye tracking, 3D reconstruction, object detection and occlusion, all without impacting the visual performance that we need 
uh, for gaming or for um, video. Now, let's talk about how, you know, the Qualcomm platform and the XR industry is changing not only the gaming and entertainment industry, but many enterprise segments, including healthcare. I think uh, many of you may have seen the work that HTC Vive has done with Penumbra to enable stroke rehabilitation to happen in a much more user-friendly and flexible way. The use cases in the medical field are many. Every day I hear about new solutions for pain management and training and others. Talking about training, I guess many of you um, already heard about uh, Walmart in US using VR to train every new employee. And when it comes to education and training, um, you know, you, you hear, you know, folks like a shadow creator in China who sold more than 40,000 units of their AR glass for students for more immersive education. And then, I mean, it doesn't stop there. Travel, manufacturing, retail, so many use cases for us uh, in the XR industry to enable and address. One example that we work closely with our partners, Accenture and IHG, a famous you know, hotel chain, was the event planning industry. We work with them on a proof of concept where we used a combination of uh, AR headsets, VR, the HTC Vive, and also smartphones to enable someone shopping for an event to have and test all configurations of the space, of auditorium, or where you're going to uh, serve a dinner and, and so forth in VR, according to the number of people and um, the size of the event. This, of course, creates enormous efficiencies in the event planning space which is in US, a 300 billion industry alone. And the other trend we want to address in this presentation is how not only immersive experiences are coming with XR, but how XR is combining with 5G and AI, changing you know, our worlds. One use case I want to address in more detail is communication. When we look into the first generation of wireless communication or wireless standards, what was the key use case? It was voice, analog voice. Second generation come, came in and made voice better, made voice calls better with digital voice and also introducing SMS. Third generation brought us mobile data. And how did that change communication? Now we could see each other over 3G devices. 4G took video communication to the next level. Skype, WhatsApp, and so forth, WeChat. For now, I can not only have a great voice communication and video, but a very rich, high resolution video communication. 5G takes communication to the next level, together with AI and XR. And that's what we call holographic telepresence. We see this event already as a first glimpse of what's about to happen. With 5G and XR together, we will enable the next generation of communication, which we call holographic telepresence. Where now physical presence is not more needed, 
I can have virtual presence with avatars that look like you know, your real you, and you could have meetings with people around the globe as if you were together, collaborating together. To make it all happen, of course, Qualcomm cannot work alone. We work with the ecosystem, our OEM customers, ODM partners, platforms, technology, and solution providers, including, of course, our friends from HTC Vive, working with operators, you know, offering the 5G mobile edge compute solutions to take, you know, this novelty to consumers and enterprises. This slide shows that the ecosystem that Qualcomm is working on is huge, and we're trying to bring, help bring everyone together from OEMs on the left side to enterprise solution providers, to component and technology partners, to operators, all together enabling you know, this future that we have been talking about in the Vive Developer Conference for the last five years. So thank you for being here virtually. I hope that we can continue the dialogue either virtually or shortly, hopefully physically back in China to help take immersion to the next level, to help take immersion to the mainstream audiences. Thank you.